Great to be here. <laughs> nice to, ni hao. <laughs> so I want to thank Diana Ding. She's wonderful. She's an incredible person uh, for having me here. I also um, have to say that Chongqing is such a beautiful city. So if you go, I went up, I went to Chongqing, I went up on the mountain at night and overlooked the entire city. It's amazing. I can't wait to go back. So I am the CEO and chairman of Founders Space. We're an incubator accelerator. We've been doing this for six years now, all over the world. I'm also a startup founder. I ran three venture-backed startups here in Silicon Valley. And Founder Space has done very well in helping entrepreneurs from all over the world come to Silicon Valley. Uh, that has been our specialty. Forbes ranked us the number one accelerator for overseas startups coming to Silicon Valley. Inc. Magazine put us in the top 10. Entrepreneur Magazine also ranked us number one. Uh, around the world now, we have over 50 partners in 22 countries. And so last year, I spent 70% of my time traveling. Luckily, I like it. <laughs> but, um, and we do a lot of work uh, in Europe with our European partners and a lot in Asia. We're working all across Asia. But our number one partner right now is China. And that's because China has so much potential and such a huge market. And we are working, we're establishing founder spaces in various cities. We're also working with lots of entrepreneurs in China. And uh, we're working with big corporations. In 10 days, I'll fly to China to work with Huawei, um, uh, helping them on their innovation strategy. So I really love China and love being there. I'm also the author of the book, Make Elephants Fly, um, which is a bestseller in China. Um, and I have the US version here. I'll actually have it outside the, at the booth, at the Ding Ding TV booth. If you want to come by, I'll sign a copy for you before I have to take off. Um, but the book uh, is all about the process of radical innovation. And today, I'm going to talk about smart life. So how AI, smart devices, 5G will change everything we do. The first thing that a lot of people don't realize is by 2020, we will have over 20 billion smart devices. 20 billion thinking devices. 5G is coming now. Now when 5G gets here, we will have not only more bandwidth, but we will also, it will enable many more devices in any given area. And what's amazing is these devices will be able to be low power devices. So they can make some of these devices on a small battery run for 10 years, up to 10 years. Think about that. That means you can have little sensors all around a building or all around a parking lot and you don't have to change the batteries all the time. That's a big constraint right now. And the other major thing about 5G is it's lower latency. Lower latency means more of these devices can communi communicate with each other faster. And that's huge, because if you think about our cities of the future, people in cars, pedestrians, everybody, all the buildings will all be talking to each other, help, helping with a variety of tasks and they'll have to do this quickly. So, uh, what we're going to see is homes are getting smarter. Uh, there are going to be smarter living spaces, smarter workspaces like WeWork is working on, uh, smarter commerce, and smarter cities. And let's start with the smart home. So, these are some of the things we're going to see in the smart home. So a big part of the innovation that's coming is how we share data. We all know with the Facebook episode that data, we need to advance, we need to take it to the next level, how our personal data is shared. It's bad enough if our Facebook data is sold uh, overseas to some company, but our personal data, when you have a speaker a smart speaker like Amazon Alexa or Google Home in your house, it is listening to everything you say. That is data to it. 
What is it going to do with this data? So how is data shared? How is privacy controlled? And how do all the devices in your house become smarter by talking to one another? There will be autonomous devices. So uh, with the mesh networks, with intelligence being pushed out to the edge, all the devices are going to get smarter and many of them will be able to work even with intermittent internet connections. So this is a big thing, especially out in remote areas, in the house, in your yard, all over the place. We're going to start to see a whole new business model, and that is device as a service. So right now, we buy devices. Like, we'll pay a lot for a washing machine, a GE washing machine, and we have a smart app with it. But in the future, uh, we may actually just subscribe to a device. So they may put a washing machine in our house and it may do the laundry for us. Uh, we may have a washing service. We may subscribe to smart devices that come and mow our lawns and do things like that. But we don't necessarily need to own all these devices. It will be more about the service than the device itself. Devices are becoming more of our caretakers. They're taking care of our business, our calendar. Um, devices are taking care of our children. They'll be taking care of our pets. This is a whole new area we're going to see, especially in countries like Japan, where the labor force is aging. They don't have enough people to do all the services. So they're relying more and more on devices. Uh, some companies will be developing smart devices so that you, if you take a vacation, don't have to worry about your pet. That's a big problem now. I know people who own dogs. I don't own a dog because I travel too much. But I'd love to have a dog. But, you know, I can't afford to leave it all the time. But if I had a little robot, a robotic device that could take care of it, that would be wonderful. Your yard. There's no reason to own a lawnmower you know, to mow a lawn once a week, when that mower can be intelligent and move from house to house to house. This is true of all sorts of devices we're going to see. Disaster prevention. A lot of companies like D-Link and others, you know, are putting in smart devices into the home. So if you have a leak and you're away on vacation, you don't come back to $50,000 in water damage. Privacy and security. I mentioned it before, um, but it's going to be a big issue, especially now after Facebook. And companies will have to start to make clear what they're doing with our data. And honestly, we are going to want more control over our data. Smart living. So if we look at our brains right now, our minds are our operating system. Right? So everything we learn programs the hardware, which is, you know, the, the, the cells we have in our brain, for us to think and interact with the world. Well, what we're seeing, we're on the cusp of right now, outsourcing parts of our brain. We already outsource a lot of functions that we used to have to worry about to our phone, right? Which is connected to the cloud. You know, our scheduling, you know, our mail, all these different things are being outsourced on our devices. In the future, um, we're going to see IoT devices taking more and more work. Like right now, you don't have to memorize a lot of things because in two seconds, you can actually get them on your phone. But we're going to have devices coming in that will actually be able to interface directly with our minds where we'll actually be able to pull up that information as quickly as we think it. So these are going to come in the form of AI agents intelligent agents that we send out there to do work for us. They will be building relationships. They could be finding us a, a, a date. They could be finding us a business partner. They will be planning for us what we do at, in our work and on vacation. They will help with memory. So things that we want to memor, memor, we want to remember, we could flag like somebody's name and our goals. They will be guiding us towards achieving our life goals. So let's talk about one example, health. Health isn't just exercising. 
health is a complete, there's a 360 degree health. It includes your diet, your mood, your stress levels, your environment, is the air quality good? Medicine, what drugs are you taking? Because they will interact with your food and other drugs and with what you do, as well as your sleep patterns. So we are going to have intelligent agents that will actually manage all these things and tell us. So when we go to do our workout, instead of just doing this whatever workout we feel like, the intelligent agent will say, if you want to maximize your goal of, of increasing your stamina and certain muscles or losing weight, this is the workout you should do today. And we know exactly what you ate. We know your stress level. If you didn't sleep well, the agent will say, have a lighter workout. If you slept really well and have energy, it will push you harder. So the intelligent agent will make actually doing your exercise, your physical exercise, customized just to you and just to your experience that you've had in the past 24 hours. Your safety. We will have intelligent agents watching out for us. When we cross the road and you're on a phone and a car's coming, in a 5G world, it will know the car's coming, it will know you, and it will be able to stop the car or warn you. It can tell you if you go into a high crime neighborhood, exactly what the danger is and where to go. Uh, it can help with all sorts of accidents if you're on a construction site or another hazardous area. Smart work. <laughs> so how is work going to get smarter? So we will uh, have these intelligence agents managing our schedule. I don't know about you, but I'm terrible at managing my schedule. So right now, I have to outsource that to a human being. But in the future, if an agent could plan everything out of my day, and it knew where all the people I needed to meet, where they were, what their schedule was, and could just schedule it and prioritize it in the way it knows I want it prioritized to achieve the goal I want to achieve, that would be great. And that is coming right now. Writing and speaking. This is happening. You know, we're getting better at voice recognition. Our devices can talk to us. Soon, we will actually be outsourcing us. Because imagine a smart device that can not only speak for you, but speaks in your voice. You know, the device emulates your voice. So it sounds just like you. It could call up, and it could be indistinguishable from your voice. So it could call up business partners and actually leave messages for them. It could call up and actually potentially negotiate a deal or, or tell somebody, an employee, what to do. We will, as a manager, when you are managing bigger and bigger operations around the world, if I could clone myself and have a device that could take care of a lot of these interactions for me, that would be amazing. Trust rating. When you meet somebody um, in business or even personally, how do you know if you can trust them? Our devices will be gathering so much data on people that they will actually uh, be able to tell us based on the person's, do they have a criminal record? Um, how were their past business dealings? It'll be able to give us insights into people we just met. It can work with vendors when you're selling to people. It can work if you're going on a date and you don't know if you can trust the person. It could work if you're reading the news. Can you trust the news? We've all heard about fake news. It would be nice to have an app that actually told us if the article we're reading is legitimate, if the facts are correct. Strategic advice. As we're planning out business strategy, the AIs and the smart devices and agents will actually be able to better and better advise us on what decisions we should make because they have access to so much more data than we would have about the market, about our competitors, about all of these things. We're going to be seeing that in the future. Career decisions. You don't know, should I quit this job? Is there a better job out for me? What is the right timing? These are hard decisions to make in life. Well, I will tell you, as AI develops, it'll become better and better at informing us. 
now is not the right time for you to quit because it knows so much. You should wait. The market is soft for your position. You will have better offers in six months. And in the meantime, you may get the promotion you don't think you're going to get. Your next boss could be a smart agent. It might not look like this robot. It might just be in the cloud. Because an actual computer can manage people potentially much better than we can. We all know that human beings are not that good at managing each other. I mean, how many of us, you know, we only have a limited time. We get impatient. We get angry, you know. But a device, an agent, could be calm all the time. It could, it could be helpful. Like, I can't help every one of my employees when they have a problem. But a smart agent could help every single employee simultaneously if that was required. They could go up to each person, know their problem. If it's a salesperson, they could say, these are techniques our other salespeople are using, and this is how you can close more deals. Let me show you. You know, if it's a marketing person, they could give them advice on other campaigns they can try. All throughout our organizations, we're going to be seeing computers play a bigger role in management. And if somebody isn't performing, it may be an artificial intelligence algorithm that terminates the person, not a human being. Hiring and firing. When we hire people, uh, right now, we tend to be biased. Human beings are very bad at judging other people. When they have done studies, and most people, within the first 10 seconds of meeting somebody, they've already formed an opinion. And then that person has to do something to change that opinion. Otherwise, they're going to believe what their initial opinion was. What does this mean? This means when somebody comes in for a job, we usually hire, nine out of 10 times, the person who looks like the right person for the job, but may not necessarily be the best job candidate. Well, I know several startups working on solving this problem right now. Augmented intelligence. More and more, as I mentioned, we are getting to the point where we can have a wireless device that we uh, put on our head that will be very tiny. You could slip it behind your ear and it will be able to actually communicate directly with your brain. This won't happen tomorrow, but within 10 years, this technology will be here. Already at universities like MIT, they are looking, they are measuring people's uh, brain activity, mapping out you know, where the activity is in their brain, and they are matching that in a database to the words we're thinking. When you think, you speak to yourself in words. Each one of those creates a pattern in your brain. A, a fast enough database can read all those patterns, start to match them, and then know just by thinking what to do. And that will connect to the internet. That will open up an entirely new interface beyond voice. Smart commerce. So smart commerce, voice shopping, through Alexa and other devices will hit 40 billion by 2022. Amazon is a master at collecting data. And they are using this data for what they call predictive commerce. That is Amazon's goal is not to have you come to amazon.com and buy something. Their goal is to know what you want before you know it and ship it to you so that you never make a buying decision again. Imagine that. Amazon wins if you never decide where you want to shop because you've signed up to Amazon and it's just coming to you. Facebook, as we all know, um, they are collecting massive amounts of data. Facebook did a study where their AI actually analyzed data from user behavior and then they went up to individual people and they said, they gave them choices. They say, what do you think you'll like? What do you think you'll do when you see this article? When people would try to imagine what they would like and they would tell Facebook, they would be wrong. But Facebook's algorithm would be right. 
What does this mean? This means Facebook today, with their current AI, is better at predicting what you will like than you are. Kind of scary. Facebook knows us better than we know ourselves. They know what video we'll like, they know what article we want to read, they know all this stuff about us better than we know ourselves. And this is just the beginning of where it's headed. AI personalization. This data, more and more, in commerce will be used to personalize services. Every service out there is going to get personal because they're going to know so much about you. When you go to a movie, you won't pick movies in the future. They will just be delivered to you because in the future, Netflix will know better than you do which movies you like. So the ratings won't matter. Travel, your whole vacations will be planned out by AIs in the future. Uh, cosmetics, they'll be able to analyze you and what look is right for you and able to recommend different cosmetics. Shopping, shopping is becoming more already, if you're going to go to a store, an experience, a personal experience they're creating for you. Services are becoming much more real time. So services are moving much closer to I need something and it is there for me. That trend will continue. Smart cities, now I gotta speed up because we're running out of time, okay? So there are lots of services in the smart city space. All of these intelligences I've been talking about are going into them, from water to energy to waste disposal, security, transportation, everything. One of our companies from Founderspace, Hashplay, in Germany okay. is actually using AI as well as visualization techniques to help cities like Berlin plan out the future of their cities. Uh, another startup is it's called Shot Spotter. It's really clever. They actually detect gunshots, listening for gunshots, and then they'll alert police. So instead of having more police, you set up more sensors that are listening to the, around the troubled areas and you can actually uh, immediately respond to them. Good goods is a new type of space where they are actually, it's one retail space, but it's shared by many retailers. So many different retailers will go into one space and put their products in there. A whole new way to think of space sharing in urban environments. Waste robotics, is actually working on robots to intelligently recycle goods. I'm almost out of time, I know it. <laughs> I'm going fast. Um, so they are working on, uh, on actually a lot of things we think we're recycling aren't really getting recycled. So this is a huge area for improvement. Uh, place meter turns video into data. So there are lots of startups now that are looking at all the video cameras, the thousands and thousands of video cameras in any city block that we now have, and actually processing that for data. And one system is working on communication. So to wrap it up, um, what we're going to see is not one giant AI. There will be big AI platforms run by Alibaba, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, these will be platforms, but on those platforms, there will be millions of AI algorithms that are designed by startups, tailored to all the different parts of our life, our work, business, everything. Thank you. So if you want, um, <laughs> if you want to reach me, my email is captain at founderspace.com. I'll also be outside with my book if you want to get a copy or you just want to have a picture or talk. Thank you so much. Thank you.